words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in our sight. For you, O Lord, are consistently our rock, our anchor, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. In times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. He is the one. This rock is Jesus. He's the only one. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and groups the solid rock. me as I share with you words from my printed reflection. Psalm 29 is an ancient poetic description of a thunderstorm. The whirling of the trees and the wind and the thunder sending vibrations throughout the ground, the brilliant, massive blasts of lightning, all perceived as the direct workings of an almighty God. On the seas, storms wreak the tumultuous tempest. On the land, even the very mountains are startled by the cosmic cacophony. cacophony. For the primitive mind, Storms were just theophanies, magnificent manifestations of God's power and glory, displays that invoked awe and reverence. The ancient writer did not have the meteorological information or understanding of our local TV weather personalities. For the psalmist, storms happened beyond our control and beyond our discernment. There is no right or wrong, good or bad, reward or condemnation. It rains on the just as well as the unjust. We usually don't mind a little rain every now and then, but storms, those we could do without. They are frightening and overwhelming, and they leave us helpless, leave our helpless mortality exposed. Metaphorically, the image of storm is quite accurate when compared with the crazy and horrific events that often transpire in our lives. Since, quote, storms, unquote, are inevitable and avoidable, the question <coughs> arises, how do we handle storms? Sickness, financial distress, job insecurity, family turmoil, mental and emotional imbalances, all are examples of storms that rise and bellow in our lives like cumulonimbus clouds. <laughs> when storms come, all we can do is seek shelter. The storm will rage in its required time, but while it rages, we need refuge mm, to ride it out. 
until it passes. We would think that it would be obvious for us to recognize when storms are raging inside or outside of us. But unfortunately, too often, we find ourselves whirling, twisting, and turning to and fro in confusion and bewilderment, <laughs> reacting, Lord have mercy, to haphazardly to our current experiences and circumstances. We are in grave danger if we fail to realize the reality of storms, whatever form they take. The best storm indicators, and this is something I really want to, end, I want to focus on today. The best storm indicators and warning flags are our negative emotions. Or let them, we let them, like, like the negative emotions. Hold on, I lost my place here. Despair, jealousy, hatred, bitterness, numbness, helplessness, hopelessness are all examples, and the list can go on. Usually we just react to our negative emotions or let them control us for a while. And of course, we know the consequences lead to nothing but destruction and pain. We become the storms in the lives of those around us. Not only are you and I trying to figure out how to cope with our storm, whatever is going on, but if we perpetuate our negative reactions to our storms, it becomes exponential to all those around us. I offer to each of us today that we are more than our storms. We are more storms. That indeed we are above and beyond our storms because of faith, hope, and agape love. In the gospel lesson today, we have the character that we're being introduced, Nicodemus who, as a rabbi, a respected member of the Jewish community of his time, as a member of the Sanhedrin Council, a person with some serious clout, influence, and power in his community, who's a closet follower of Jesus, comes to Jesus by night. Because he knows everybody watch everything he does and everything he, everywhere he goes and everything he says, he had to sneak. Jesus, gee, I got to I need to talk to you, man. Let's go over here where nobody can see us. We know that you are of God because the things you teach and the things you do. It's clearly something that God is doing in and through you. How do you do that, man? How is it that you're able to claim such a... Jesus says to Nicodemus, I see your heart. I see the tumult of your storm. You're worried about your position and your respectability in the community. You know that you, you're dealing with a whole bunch of politics and drama with all them other folk on the Sanhedrin and everybody pulling punches and choosing words and all, and you caught up in all that mess. And here you come to me at night seeking refuge from your storm. 
seeking shelter from your chaos. My sisters and brothers, you and I need to be aware. To, to, to be very deliberate and intentional about taking inventory of the crap that's going on in our world. I, I, am I not supposed to say that word? I just said it. Okay, I'll fix it later. I mean, we need to be aware of it. Because these, uh, we're in this today's context, we're using the metaphor of storm. Because these storms so control and dominate our thinking, our being, our doing, our reacting of our daily lives. Every day we find ourselves in react mode, in survive mode. In perpetuating and stabilize mode. That's almost an admission and an indictment that we are being defined by our storms. Our storms are dictating who and what we are about. And Jesus is saying to Nicodemus and to us, you're more than your storm. You're so much more. You have available to you. Faith, hope, love that take you out, out of and above your storm. To look at your storm, to step, in, step away from the storm. And I remember when I was a kid, when I was a kid, my mama used to get so mad at me. Because the storms would, in, in the Midwest, we'd have some seriously, well, obviously, Amen. <laughs> in the Midwest, you see, I mean, these storms that are going on now are above and beyond the norm. But we we have some seriously awesome storms. And dumb little kid like me, you know, the, the wind would start. We had these really cool trees in our neighborhood. And when the wind's gusts started to happen, I'm looking out the window, and it looks like the trees are doing the mashed potatoes. You, you do know what I'm talking about when I say the mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah. Everybody do. Anyway, <laughs> and so I would run outside. And I'd stand in the middle of the yard and be like, oh, this is so cool. And I'd go watching and the wind start. And I would get your butt in the house. <laughs> and I'm asking us to recognize that we have the we have, we have the possibility, the option of standing back from the storm, saying, that's a storm. That's that. And it has a beginning, and it's gonna have an end. So why? Would I then let this time-limited piece of stuff then define me? Huh? What's that about? Why am I letting that yeah. have that kind of power over me? Y'all see what I'm saying? I got you. It doesn't have to be that way. And so Jesus says to Nicodemus, you must be born again. I love that old Baptist in because <laughs> I know that ye must be born again. I mean, the, the, the word being translated born again is anothen in the Greek. And so Jesus deliberately is using this term in in his conversation because the word can be translated in two different interpreted in two different ways. It can be translated born again. And it can be translated born from above. Jesus isn't saying, I'm using this word, but you're hearing me with your ears. You know how somebody can say something to you, 
and they hear what they want to hear, mm. but you're trying to say something else. Mm. And even though you said the words that ought to be obvious, they interpret it. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God <laughs> I interpreted what you said in the way that they thought they wanted to hear it. And so Jesus had to correct him. No, I'm not saying born again, I'm saying born from above. Reaching up and above yourself, catching hold to the hand of God that is that sets the storms in play and sets the rest in the times, the God who is in control of it all. That's why he said, for God so loved the world. I love to emphasize the word so. You know, and that just wonderful the way it John times it. For God so loved the world. It's almost like God is up there with God's, I'm being uh, anthropomorphic here, but God's hands bogged. Now, I so love you that I'm going to send my only begotten son to die for you and rise again for you to show you that you have available to you all that you need and more. To live life, because Jesus said this numerous times, especially in the Gospel of John. I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Having life and having life abundantly is so much more than just living in this little box of reactive, I'm, I'm reacting to all the stuff that's going on in my world. Because that, that's all it is. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little box that we're letting ourselves climb in and live in. And Jesus is saying, look at the box. Drop the box. Open up the box. The Spirit is in you. The Spirit is with you from above. When he says, be born from above, is claiming the Spirit of God that is available to you to help you Walk with your chest out and your shoulders back and your head erect and say, I am more than a storm. I am more than a conqueror. I am a victor, not a victim. So, I, I close with, I'm just going to say this to myself, but I'm saying it to all of us together. How we handle our storms becomes the indicator of whether or not we're trusting God. If I'm letting my storms keep me messed up all the time. Living in react mode. If I'm going to let that happen, then I need to remind myself who I am. God is in you. God is with you. God promised to never leave you nor forsake you. And God says, do you believe me? I told you I'm not going to leave you, but I'm with you through the storm. I told, I'm telling you that I lived and died and rose again so that you could have faith, hope, and love. I did all these things so that you can have them and live life abundantly. And if you stay over here, sitting in your pile of stuff, <laughs> that's your choice. Nobody's going to make you get up out of your stuff. You gotta choose to get up out of your storm. Out of your storm. I'll call it storm. It's better to say storm. I don't want to be offensive today. I mean, but I offer this. I remind, let's remind one another that we've got so much more. That's why I sang that song in the beginning. The rock is Jesus. He is the one. Be very sure your anchor 
have a hold of the risen one, the Messiah, the anointed one. Get Christ and hold on. And the victory that Christ won on Calvary and in the empty tomb is available to each of us to overcome anything. That's why the Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Would you pray with me? We thank you, dearest God, for hope and faith. And we thank you especially, oh God, for your agape, unconditional love. Help us, O oh Lord, to truly trust in the hope that you provide, in the refuge and the rescue and the shelter that you give, that we may then live and live abundantly. Amen.